Good morning and welcome to our final results presentation for the December 2020 year end. I'm Jim Shears, Group CEO, and I'll be taking you through an operational summary for the year, followed by the financial highlights. I'll then hand over to our Group Commercial Director, Phil Ratcliffe, who will talk you through the year in some more detail. So let's start by taking a look at the operational highlights for the year. Starting with the B2B part of the group, we were pleased with the year overall. In our licensed business, which is mostly character toys, performance was a bit more mixed, and it was impacted by a couple of major retail accounts in particular. These accounts adopted a more cautious FOB buying strategy. An FOB is where full container loads are purchased and delivered straight to our customers. As a result of this, the smaller and more nimble accounts benefited. Our domestic business, however, was very strong, and our domestic business is where we actually warehouse the stock. But the lack of FOB did have a major impact on turnover overall. Notwithstanding this, we have a strong portfolio of classic licenses. Uh, for preschool, we have Peppa Pig, Paw Patrol and Thomas. And for older kids, Frozen, Disney Princess, as well as Spider-Man and Batman. All of these contributed well to our license revenue for the year. And other licenses such as uh, LOL Surprise, uh, Toy Story, Trolls and Nerf all made a really solid contribution. In own brands, our stunt scooters under the Stunted brand and our Kickmaster football training range were both ahead of the prior year. And although again, FOB revenues from Headstrom Outdoor Play were behind the prior year, uh, domestic revenues increased significantly, which was very good. Our U-Move scooter range was ahead of the prior year and life-wide e-scooters made a really good contribution to revenue from a standing start. Uh, looking at new licenses then, uh, Phil will talk in some more detail, but we've signed a number of new properties for 2021 and beyond, including Banksy's Graffiti, Baby Shark, Coca Melon, Hey Dougie and Kindy Kids, and initial feedback from retailers is very encouraging. There's been a strong resurgence in Barbie, and our classic licenses have continued to perform well. Uh, as you all know, some licenses come and go, and therefore it's a challenge for us to make sure that we manage the stock as we sell through those properties and they move out of the portfolio. Moving on to bicycles, bicycles had a very good year. We were up over 40% and revenue in our independent bike dealer brands, Claude Butler, Dawes and Squish, was ahead. We had been impeded by a lack of stock availability, which did improve towards the end of the year and enabled a really strong finish to 2020. Squish, which is our lightweight kids brand, was a great success story. And we had now have a full order book for 2021 and well into 2022. There was strong growth from our national retailer brand Falcon and also our Boss Mountain Bike range. And this was supported by our other brands, including Ellswick for Heritage, Townsend for Junior and Zombie for BMX. Our e-bikes and e-scooters continue to grow significantly, particularly in the second half of the year. And on these, we utilize our bicycle brands, Doors and Falcon. And for e-scooters, we use our brands, Life and Wired. Moving on to golf, it was an excellent year with revenue more than doubling over the prior year. This was driven by golf trolleys, both electric and manual, which sold well, and also supported by adult and junior package sets. And indeed, overall, most categories were well ahead of the prior year. Looking at our B2C part of the business, it's clearly becoming increasingly important to the group. And Expressco, which is our online group of businesses, is now between a fifth and a quarter of group revenue. Looking at each part of Expressco then, our Garden Comforts website showed that outdoor living was 121% ahead, garden storage was almost 100% up, and outdoor play was nearly 200% up in the year, which was very encouraging. And during the summer months, our parasols and trampolines sold very strongly. Our indoor ranges using our At Comforts website from autumn onwards was strong too. Small domestic appliances, particularly kitchen type products, were well ahead of the prior year. And our household furniture ranges were over 67% ahead. It wasn't quite such a good year for mobility, and Pro Rider Mobility in particular, where we sell mobility scooters and other mobility accessories, struggled. Mobility scooters themselves were approximately 40% behind, but some other products within that range, such as Rise and Recline chairs, was actually 67% up. 
And finally, our pro rider leisure part of the Expressco business, of which the biggest category is golf, started slowly, but improved in May when the golf course is opened again. And indeed, electric golf trolley sales recovered and finished approximately 3% ahead of the prior year. If we look at our websites, all five Expressco websites have been fully redesigned. And we're really pleased with the double digit growth that we've experienced in both visitors and revenue since that's happened. Our Bente's golf website has been redesigned and indeed our Tanner Group Cycles website is also being redeveloped at the moment. Our plan is to introduce some new features, for example, click and collect on bicycles, uh, which we think will really help drive more business through the websites. The corporate PLC website was also updated in 2020. It has been a year of a number of challenges, the biggest ones being COVID, freight and Brexit, which I know Phil is going to talk about shortly. We are working in a COVID safe environment now, and it's been imperative to keep the warehouse dispatching through that time and most other staff have been remote working, which they've adapted to extremely well. Freight costs are starting to come down and there's more capacity in the system, but we still have ongoing challenges in exporting to Europe, particularly with regards to logistics and duty. As I've mentioned before, stock availability has been an issue in 2020. Lead times are getting longer, particularly on bicycles. And as a result of that, we've ordered well into 2022 now. The US dollar has helped us, but costs are increasing in the Far East, in particular steel, plastic, and the exchange rate between US dollar and renminbi um, has put much pressure on costs. And we see this as a bit of a problem as we go into 2021 and beyond. Looking at property and IT, our existing site was revalued to 4.2 million pounds, which is an increase of just over a million pounds. We purchased this site located in Birmingham for £2.6 million in 2013. So that's over a 60% return in six years that we've owned it. And this is a capital appreciation of around 6% compound per annum gross. We've also recently announced about the purchase of 3.2 acres of land next door for £2.85 million. Property is in high demand in Birmingham at the moment. The site is in a great location next to the M6, close to the M42 and M5, and with good access to Felixstowe along the A14. We're also close to Birmingham Airport and potentially good rail links moving forwards, and we'll aim to complete on this transaction in April 21. After this, we're going to commence construction on a new warehousing and distribution facility, which we plan to occupy in June 2022. We've already undertaken a full environmental survey of the land, we've drilled boreholes and we found no major issues. We've employed a planning consultant and we've made a pre-planning application which has been submitted and we've received a favourable result from Birmingham City Council. We've recruited a project manager, architect and structural engineers and we've started or are starting the flood risk assessment, section 278 work, bream, ecology and noise surveys. The architectural drawings are all done and we hope to share and discuss these when we meet at the AGM in June. Our full planning application is soon to be submitted and then we will begin the tender process also. Whilst all this is being done, we've agreed a short-term lease with the vendor, Flow Gas Britain. They will stay on the site until the 1st of July. Post 1st of July, we've entered into a 10-year lease at a rent of £44,500 with them for half an acre of the site that's not required for our development. HS2, as some of you will know, is nearby and this may prevent building works commencing as early as we would like. They're still doing some surveys but we're hoping to start building by the 1st of September and in advance of that we plan to demolish and clear the site. The building itself will be 11 metres eaves height eight metres to haunch, it will be fully racked and with a small office and welfare facility. When it's complete, we anticipate it will double the existing warehouse capacity to approximately 160,000 square feet. It's certainly a large project, but there are significant commercial benefits which we believe will support the growth plans that we have and also help to maximise long-term shareholder value. For example, our existing premises is not large enough if you want to grow the business. And although it's been flexible, 
and we will have greater control than we have had with 3P warehousing, which will streamline the receipt and the dispatch of goods. It will also give a scale with multiple carriers picking up from the same location. And it will certainly help us with our warehouse labor to more officially schedule what our warehouse staff can do. The project will be supported by a new ERP system, and this is already underway, and we're aiming to go live by January 2022. Let's now take a look at the financial highlights for the year. Group revenue was down 4.6% for the year to 37.1 million, which compared to 38.8 million last year. As I said before, there was less FOB, but this was partly offset by more domestic business. Our gross profit percentage was up 2.5% to 32.9%. This was driven by strong domestic demand, which is higher margin. We also managed our supplier cost prices. We've resourced product where it's been necessary to do so. And we've certainly not been afraid to discontinue low margin product lines in the year. We've also sought to introduce new and more profitable products. And as you would imagine, we've had very little discounting necessary during the year. Gross profit in absolute terms increased by 3.4% to 12.2 million in 2020. And this was up from 11.8 million in 2019. Our operating expenses decreased by 7.5% to 8.1 million. And this was driven by a reduction in travel, exhibition costs and employment expenses. We also had reduced third party storage costs as stock holdings were lower at certain points of the year. Looking at profit before tax, as a result of the strong margin and reduced overhead, this was up almost 60% to four million pounds. And if you look at the graph, you can see that although in 2017 and 2018, the PBT result was similar, overall PBT has improved significantly in the last five years. On earnings per share, basic EPS was up from 40.5p to 68.5p, which is an increase of 69%. And diluted EPS was up to 64.7p. The EPS shows growth from 16p four years ago to the 68.5p that I mentioned in 2020. In terms of dividends, subject to shareholder approval, we're proposing a final dividend of 5.5p, which compares to 3.04p last year, plus the special dividend of 2p. Therefore, total dividends were up over 30% to 8.62p, which compared to 66 last year. You can see on the next slide that as profits have increased, so we have also increased our dividend from 3p in 2010, which is when we started to pay a dividend, to the 8.62p in 2020. One thing that's important to point out is that if dividends exceed the tandem group pension plan deficit contribution of £336,000 per annum, we have an agreement in place with the trustees to match that excess with additional contributions. And for the year, we anticipate that this will be just under £100,000. Our cash at bank was strong in the year. We aim to see as much of the profit in cash and at the year end, this was £6.1 million, up 21% from £5 million in the prior year. Our net cash, after borrowings and financial liabilities, was up £2 million to £3.8 million. Our borrowings reduced by 28%. We paid down bank debt and reduced our invoice finance liabilities. And as you can see on the graph, we made good progress in improving this from a net debt position of £5.7 million in 2015 to a net cash position of 3.8 million pounds in 2020. If we look at pensions, there was an increase in the deficit to 4.2 million pounds in the year, which was driven by low gilt yields. And as a result of this, our actuaries used a lower discount rate assumption of 1.6%. However, our 2019 triennial valuations have now been concluded and a recovery plan has been agreed, which shows an increase of 5% per annum into the tandem scheme and level contributions into the casket scheme. Despite the pension impact, overall net assets were up 16% to 16.6 million. And as you can see on the graph, there's been a consistent year on year improvement in net assets. I'll now hand over to Phil to discuss 2020 in a bit more detail. 
Thank you, Jim. Um, um, and now I'm just going to move on to uh, provide some backdrop and additional context to uh, 2020 and how the year was effective in, affected in particular by COVID. Um, then I'm going to talk you through uh, some of the highlights from uh, 2020, uh, some of which Jim's already referred to, and then a brief outlook uh, for 2021. So the first slide really refers to how we dealt with the COVID pandemic. Uh, it was quite a turbulent year to say the least. So first of all, we had some disruption amongst our China factories in particular, as they were the first to experience the pandemic, particularly in Wuhan and Southern China. So that did cause us some disruption of supply in the early part of the year. Uh, then as it moved uh, across the globe, particularly into the UK, some of the bricks and mortar stores closed. Some of our big customers, such as Smith's, uh, independent toy shops, TK Maxx, all closed their doors. Those that had um, large online presences, um, some of those also went into panic mode and um, it took them quite a while to decide you know, how to handle the situation. And some of our bigger customers actually deferred orders or indeed cancelled orders in the early part of the year. And this really referred to our FOB business. And by uh, FOB, that is, is product that um, retailers order in bulk and they leave our factories in China and the Far East or elsewhere and go straight into the retailers' warehouses so they do not touch our facility uh, here in the UK. So that's the difference between uh, FOB and domestic sales. Domestic sales are all serviced from our UK warehouse. So whilst our, our UK domestic business uh, was very strong, um, the FOB side of the business was uh, a, a little bit more varied because of uh, how some of our bigger national customers behaved and handled the pandemic. So we did see an increased reliance on domestic supply little and often as opposed to FOB big bulk orders. Obviously, we were also faced with the reduced headcount and resource, which we dealt with well working from home, as Jim mentioned earlier. And it's very well documented that there has been an accelerated move to online trading amid store chain closures and cancellation of print and media, such as the Argos catalogue, for example, which, uh, which, which didn't happen in autumn, winter, and then was permanently cancelled. And obviously, uh, store closures amongst some of the major chains in the UK. Uh, another um, uh, casualty of the pandemic was uh, we do a lot of licensed business, as Jim uh, pointed out. Um, a lot of the key movies and TV programs that we uh, license out, such as Minions, for example, and Batman, uh, movies were due out in 2020. They were either cancelled altogether or deferred until the uh, lockdowns uh, ended, and some of them are still waiting to be released uh, as we speak. So that did affect our uh, license business uh, for last year. Um, but what we did see was certainly an increased consumer demand for all things uh, outdoor or sports or wheeled based. Obviously, kids were, were off school. Uh, there was a trend towards uh, more fitness based um, activities. Um, people weren't traveling away on holiday. And of course, there was an aversion to using public transport to an extent, all of which benefited our outdoor and cycling sectors. So very good for demand. And as Jim mentioned earlier, what we did see is, is some of our uh, agile and uh, more entrepreneurial customers taking advantage of that, um, coming for domestic stock and really cleaning us out in, uh, in, in, in very short order, um, which was fantastic. But then getting replenishment stock, we found was quite challenging. Okay, so now dissecting the different uh, elements of the business. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about our toys and sports business, which is, uh, you know, obviously one of the powerhouses of the, uh, of the group. I think this was probably the most challenged sector for us. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of our major national accounts pulled up the drawbridge on bulk FOB buys, and that was largely down to the uncertainty. Nobody really knew where the pandemic was going and how it would affect consumer behaviour. So some customers approached the year with caution. And of course, many bricks and mortar stores, toy chains, were actually closed throughout the first lockdown. 
but some of our uh, customers, particularly the online customers, gained. They came at us for stock from all angles and uh, took advantage of that heightened consumer demand. As far as our licensed business was concerned, that's very closely linked to our FOB business. So obviously, if some of those retailers are curtailing their FOB business, that will affect uh, licenses. And on top of that, with the uh, the movie production and TV production slates either being deferred or cancelled altogether, that did lead to uh, a reduction in uh, in sales of, of licensed products. Um, notwithstanding that, our sales of licensed products were actually ahead of uh, 2018, even though they were behind uh, 2019. What we did find, if license sales struggled a little bit, that our wheeled toy business really came to the fore last year. And, and as a whole, our own brand wheel business was up by over 131%. So that was very encouraging. As Jim mentioned, uh, Kickmaster also grew last year. Our Hedstrom outdoor play business was a little bit more mixed. Our domestic sales were exceptional, whereas we lost um, a major export cancellation in Mexico uh, due to COVID. So whilst our domestic business was well up, our FOB business was well down. But despite all the uncertainty and all the retail behaviour that was exhibited during the year, uh, what we did find is that our consumer demand for our products remained very, very strong. Um, it was 15% up in line with a general outdoor toy market of 15% and a wider toy market of around about 5%. So, so we were in line with the growth in the outdoor market and ahead of the, uh, the toy market as a whole. Uh, and our Ben Sears golf business uh, more than doubled, benefiting from the re-emergence from lockdown uh, as courses reopened and stimulated demand, not from seasoned and experienced golfers so much, but for new and occasional golfers. So every golf category uh, was close or, 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 or was a doubling, but especially trolleys, which um, saw a threefold increase. As uh, Jim mentioned uh, earlier, our, our bikes business uh, increased by uh, over 40%. And I think the COVID pandemic re-energized the static leisure cycling market. And again, I think it's important to point out that our heartland is in the family, kids and leisure sector, not necessarily your serious uh, riders or hobbyists. And all our core bicycle brands experienced double digit growth across Claude, Butler, Falcon, Doors, Boss and Squish. And uh, in particular, uh, our electric bikes business was very, very strong, showing an eightfold increase on prior year. Our business-to-business -business order intake increased a threefold and our monthly average B2B website users increased by 13%. Uh, we launched over 120 new or updated SKUs, including four new electric bikes and had nine uh, IBD, IBD stands for independent bike dealership spot buys, uh, offered throughout 2020, all sold out before the stock arrived. Uh, and we introduced seven new corporate SKUs. Corporate, um, incidentally, is the term we use for sales to national retailers, so bikes to national retailers. So moving on to our B2C Expressco business, um, all our websites were relaunched on a new platform and a new digital agency, and that benefited traffic to the majority of our websites. Uh, Pro Rider Leisure, for example, um, the traffic increased by 38%. Garden and Camping by 97% and Jack Stonehouse by 243%. Um, the traffic was down on mobility by 36%, mainly because a lot of users were also shielders. Um, the growth was complemented by better A-plus content on our third-party accounts, uh, such as uh, Amazon, leading to improved conversion. And that is a big focus for 2021 also. Uh, major growth was seen in uh, certain key categories such as parasols, storage, uh, golf, outdoor living, Hollywood mirrors, uh, small domestic appliances, radiator covers, etc. So in summary, it was a good year for the group in terms of profit, turnover slightly down. Uh, MV uh, Toys and Sports was the worst affected, uh, largely due to the behaviour of our national retailers, uh, FOB business and licences, whereas bikes, golf and our Expressco B2C business 
all benefited from COVID. So moving on to some of the uh, challenges that we face uh, in 2021, which are somewhat different to those faced in uh, 2020 and relate largely to our supply chain. So first thing to mention is freight rates have been escalating. They went up sevenfold at a peak on 2020 rates, and they're currently around about fivefold on last year, but they are coming down slowly but surely. We've also faced um, some cost inflation pressure as the UN to dollar exchange rate depreciates, and that means that uh, some of our suppliers um, are getting less money for the same dollar price. So in order to mitigate that, they're having to increase prices. As well as that, since uh, the end of Chinese New Year, what we've seen is an increase in raw material prices, round about an average of 25% there or thereabouts on things like steel, paper and board, copper and plastics. And last but not least, the lead times are all extending out as lockdowns ease and demand uh, is resurgent. Brexit is causing us a few headaches as well uh, with uh, additional double duties into Europe and obviously as I'm to pass on some of those additional uh, duties to our customers in Southern Ireland and elsewhere in mainland Europe and alongside that we face uh, increased administrative clearance and shipping costs. Many of our retailers are still closed. Some are cutting back on their SKU count um, and orders um, and some are going more towards um, an on-label route. Uh, naturally, there's been some resistance to uh, price increases. Despite the challenges, uh, many of our customers are less risk averse than last year and they realise that possession of stock is critical as we emerge from lockdown and lead times extend. Uh, and despite all these challenges, um, our price uh, increases from suppliers uh, have been passed on to our customers and as of uh, today our order book is significantly ahead of the same period last year. In terms of the outlook for uh, 2021 we haven't been able to visit our suppliers uh, in the Far East so we, uh, we contacted them all via email over 60 of them and the result of that is over uh, 200 new toy products which are available uh, in 2021. We've also agreed uh, seven new licenses, uh, many based around uh, YouTube and digital phenomenon. We've expanded our life and wired e-scooter ranges to include kids models and a new second generation honeycomb tire series. We have put some refreshment into our stunted and you move brands, both of which grew last year. We've put in three new Kickmaster uh, lines in advance of the uh, forthcoming Euros in 2021 and expanded our Headstrom brand with the introduction of a brand new musical toddler swing and uh, a new series of mud kitchens. In golf, we've introduced a brand new ladies range and on top of that, we have employed a new digital marketing manager to drive our core brands and our core categories via social media. The likes of e-bikes, e-scooters and key products will all be focused upon alongside enhanced retail content. All our B2C Express Gold websites have been relaunched with a new platform and digital agency and we're already seeing some very encouraging results in terms of increased traffic and sales. There will be a continued focus on B2C social media campaigns, digital advertising and web optimization. And in terms of product, we will expand our offering in small domestic appliances, parasols, e-scooters and ride-ons. Our license focus really is to uh, carry on with the core classic licenses, many of which you will recognise, Paw Patrol, Peppa Pig, the two leading preschool licenses in the UK, uh, Barbie, Princess, Frozen and LOL, which obviously have a very strong appeal to girls, uh, Avengers, Batman and Spider-Man, with a focus on movie releases and, and boys. In terms of Avengers, Batman and Spider-Man, there is a very strong uh, movie release slate, particularly as we head into 22. The new licenses we've signed for 21 tend to focus around either successful toy properties or successful YouTube phenomenon. So take Coco Melon as an example. This has really come from uh, nowhere. And as it stands, uh, Coco Melon has got 95 billion views of its series on YouTube. Similarly, Baby Shark is the most watched YouTube video of all time. 
with 7.4 billion views on YouTube. And Kindy Kids is a successful toy property which started to come to prominence at the end of last year and some of our customers are getting quite excited about. Uh, we mentioned Banksy earlier. We've teamed up with a company called Brandalized to feature Banksy's graffiti on our extreme sports offerings such as skateboards, BMX bikes and stunt scooters. And we've added to our Marvel slate the Marvel Cinematic Universe with a range of Marvel Eternals products, which is uh, the next generation in the Marvel Universe. And Hey Dougie is a leading show on um, CBeebies with very, very strong viewing figures, both on BBC iPlayer and uh, regular viewing slots. Last but not least, Blues, Clues and You, parents of children aged 18 and above will probably remember this from the first time around in the early noughties. And here is a selection of uh, new product featuring some of those new uh, and classic uh, licenses. Um, and I've just selected um, a little snapshot um, which really sort of exhibits our um, capability to innovate product within our category. Likewise, on our own brands, which performed particularly well last year, uh, we've introduced some key new products, um, such as the uh, Headstrom Musical Toddler Swing, which is smartphone enabled, uh, a Kickmaster product, which um, allows kids to create an instant pitch, uh, with line markings and pop-up goals, um, mud kitchens capitalising on a trend and uh, premium stunt and preschool scooters. I will now um, hand back to uh, Jim um, for his closing comments and questions. Thanks Phil. As you can see there are plenty of uh, new products that we are launching for 2021 and beyond in license categories, in our own brand categories, in bicycles, and also golf. And certainly we're very excited about what's going to happen in the future on our B2C business. <clears throat> we do face a number of challenges, but I think we're in a strong position to mitigate those challenges and deal with them as they arise. We certainly have a strong team behind us um, to cope as we move forwards with the business. I'll now take some questions. Do you have any staff on furlough? Uh, we, we have one staff on furlough at the moment who is uh, on part-time furlough actually, and they are in the mobility part of the group. We did have a number of staff at the start of uh, the pandemic who we furloughed, but as the year unfolded, we were able to bring them back. And so now, yes, we just have one person part-time furlough. Thank you, Jim. Do you see high street sales returning post-COVID? I'm keen to understand what your online plans look like and how well your websites are performing as you're obviously looking to grow this area of the business. I do see uh, um, uh, sales returning to um, bricks and mortar stores, but um, there is um, definitely um, an unstoppable move to more uh, online sales. Um, and uh, what we're doing about that, I mentioned earlier that we have just uh, employed um, a digital marketing manager uh, really to uh, drive our brands across uh, social media platforms, but also to make sure that our content on some of our online retailers sites uh, is the best that it could possibly be. So that's uh, one thing that we're doing. And also I do see going forward, and I think Jim will agree, is we need to leverage the synergies between um, our B2C business and our sourcing capabilities uh, and our product development capabilities. Thanks, Phil. Do you see the current boom in cycling and golf ending after lockdown? It's uh, very difficult to say at the moment. We've ordered a lot of product um, for 2021 and beyond. Certainly uh, lead times are much longer as Phil mentioned and therefore we've made that commitment um, and what I would say is that the order book is, is very strong at the moment, significantly ahead of the prior year. Thanks, Jim. Why do you have so many brands? Aren't you better to focus on a few? So, um, yeah, so we, 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 we have different brands. So starting off with, uh, with bicycles in particular, um, we do uh, segment our brands between corporate, which is um, the, uh, the sales that go to... Uh, uh, national retailers 
um, and independent bike dealerships. Uh, and the reason we do that is obviously so that we don't find that um, our independent bike uh, dealers uh, are compromised on uh, on their margins. Um, and certain brands are ideally suited for the independent bike dealerships, whereas other brands are tailored and designed specifically for our national uh, retailers. So that's one of the reasons why we do have um, a, a number of bike brands. And it's fair to say that not only have we got a retail segmentation strategy, we also have a product segmentation strategy. So uh, a brand like Boss is, uh, is focused on the uh, national retailers. Um, whereas um, a brand such as Doors tends to be more focused towards um, uh, independent bike uh, dealerships um, and um, certain brands um, stand for certain things. As far as toys are concerned, uh, it is really important that we do um, keep the separate brands. So a good example is that if we just called everything uh, MV or we put everything under the uh, wired banner or the U-Move banner, um, it doesn't take into account the different uh, demographics that we uh, that we sell to. So, for example, the consumer for a stunt scooter, uh, i.e., it's probably you know um, um, an older kid, um, uh, perhaps a youth um, out there um, on the streets, um, is not the same as the consumer that will be buying one of our U Move uh, products. It tends to be more uh, parental more preschool uh, so the, the 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 brands have got very different appeal and and lastly um, some of uh, our uh, brands have got very very strong heritage in equity so for example Headstrom is very well known in the outdoor play space uh, Kickmaster is synonymous with uh, with football uh, and Pop Black with table sports um, so you know we feel that um, that uh, those brands are too valuable to uh, to just homogenise under one uh, MV banner. And when's your AGM and will it be a physical event this year? Uh, yes, so AGM is on the 24th of June and we are very hopeful that it will be a physical event this year. Um, and we look forward to seeing all investors at that event. Thank you for listening today.